Hi, welcome to Large Dog Experience. As pet owners, even though we find training fun and rewarding, we don't have time to train every day. Therefore, we try to accomplish as much as we can in every training session without overwhelming the dog and setting them up for success. The sit-stay pattern is a perfect example of this and we are prepping for more. But right now, all that's required is a sit, come forward and sit from the dog. And Mano here, well, he's in a timeout because Ripley is in season and when he smells her on me, well, let's just say he thinks I'm a dog. <laughs> Mano, heel. Yes, we nailed it. Oh, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> we teach the sit stay different than most. And Hubby gives a demo showing why he does it later on. And I gotta say, I was surprised because he did it on the fly and Mano had no practice. The sit stay exercise begins in the house where we can limit the distractions and we're just going to lure the dog into position by placing the treat in front of their nose and moving your hand back over their head, guiding them into position. Now for those of you who have never lured a dog into position, you want to start right and those who already have a treat piranha, this is how you'd want to fix it. You want to cup your hand holding the treat in your palm and gently pushing it towards his mouth, remembering not to pull back because that'll encourage the grabby behavior that we don't like. And if you have a dog that drools on the smell or the sight of food, you might want to keep a towel handy. Dogs are extremely good at patterns. And if I'm starting with puppies or a dog that's never been leered before, I don't leer anything else other than the sit. A pattern of sit to stand down without a sufficient amount of time for the dog to clearly understand the difference in the positions can be a point of confusion for the dog, especially building commands with duration. I'm going to avoid a potential downside and make sure my intentions are as clear as possible. As you work at this, it'll begin to get easier to get them into the sit position. And when it does, that's when you're going to turn the luring motion into the single for sit. Give the single and hold. If the dog struggles, apply spatial pressure by stepping towards the dog. The focus on your signaling hand and the body pressure should be enough to get the sit. And when you do, reward the dog. Making sure that you give the single before you step forward and not at the same time. We want the dog to understand the single as the cue. Once they begin to sit on the signaling motion, we are gonna start going for duration and we're gonna name the command right over top the singling motion. We want 30 seconds right from the start. Dogs wear down mentally as the lesson goes on and if you add a few seconds and then slowly add a few more seconds, the lesson becomes more difficult for the dog mentally and it's less engaging and rewarding. Going for 30 seconds right from the start is a good foundation for starting the heel. And as the lesson goes on, you can decrease time and increase engagement and rewarding to keep the dog focused as long as you can to get as many reps as you can. Your starting position should look like this. Just pretend I'm inside the house. Leash in left hand, treat in the right. There should be just enough space to give a slight step forward to apply spatial pressure if the dog breaks. 15 seconds in, if they are looking at you, say the word good and reward for focus if you have it. Once you get the 30 seconds, release the dog with come and encourage him to follow you back with a little lead pressure and a treat. Feed as you take a step back. You want the dog to have some momentum. Then as you take another, return your right hand to your side of your body and stop abruptly. Try for the second uncommanded sit by applying body pressure only. Often just leaning and slightly bending over the dog is enough to get the sit. When his butt hits the ground, reward him. Then praise the dog while you move him with the come command to rinse and then repeat the lesson. We want the uncommanded sit to set up for what my husband calls a freeze space, which aids into a quicker transition to healing. The come command here means nothing to the dog at this point, but it lets them know that something is different and they can break position. For us, when we use a sit stay command, we use it often for control and we want the position associated with calmness, so we teach it that way. We do not use a more typical yes marker for release just yet. We want to establish that as a higher intensity release marker for later. 
and instead we teach a controlled release that aids us in transitioning to the heel position. The goal is to get your dog to move like this. Use good boy in lure if you have to aid getting momentum. When we get six approximately 30 second sits in a row, we're gonna take it outside. We're simply gonna practice the exact same thing outside. What you need is a barrier long enough to complete two sits in open space on either end of it. And you want the barrier on your right side when you're facing your dog. Again, when we get six approximately 30 second sits in a row, I'm going to test my dog to see if he's ready to move on to healing. Line up off center of the dog and when you repeat the exercise, he reacts the same way, he's good to go. If the dog does not react the same way, continue to practice from the center front position and retest after another six wins. If he fails, we're gonna move on anyway, as long as you got six center front wins and the second sit. Okay, this is the best way I could come up with on the fly to demonstrate the benefits of teaching the sit stay as a pattern and not just a position. As you can see, these signals mean nothing to him. My dogs obviously know how to heal, so I'm going to use the free space to teach Mano two new positions and come and sit at my 9 and 3 o'clock position. Mano has really been conditioned to go around tires and not to sit on them. And I broke a rule I have about setting the dog up for success, and I should have chosen an easier object. Mano knows the correct answer here is always to come and sit. The only thing different here is the tire. I keep my position facing the dog like always. I use my yes marker when I like his position. Whenever I'm teaching a new behavior, I keep the lesson as positive as possible to keep motivation and Mano is allowed to be a bit of a goofball. Next, I use my yes marker like a camera to provide an instant snapshot to the dog of the conditions that trigger the moment of release for reward. It's not about timing the marker to his position, it's about marking mine. He knows his part, so if I have his focus directed where I need it, I snap that picture. Now, because Mano knows his part, I need to make sure he has a clear picture of mine with another rep and a snapshot.
Now, like I discussed in our last video, I'm going to use the shed like a target for an extra cue to align Mano's butt on the tire in case he struggles with coming from a new front position. Not a perfect sit, but I'm taking the win. Now I want to remove the influence of the shed so he has to rely on his own focus for position and me for direction. Now it's time for the other side. To the dog, the snapshot from the side looks the same with the tire. So all the practice on one side extends quickly to the other. Now to get rid of the tires, and ironically for that, I need more tires.
Mano struggles because of a handler error here and I step in applying body pressure, cueing a sit in a known position for Mano. I need to work past the confusion and take the win when he shifts his position. Next attempt and he's still confused, but adjusts his position better. I could drop the tire to help alignment if he continues to struggle, or move closer to the shed. I can also help out by practicing on the other side, where he doesn't yet know this position. Now for the other side. Slow but good and I have established a good foundation to two new positions for polishing in just under 13 minutes. These guys grow extremely quick and are bigger than most breeds by the time they're five or six months old. We need our obedience quick because of their size but it also must take into account that these guys can still be puppies. For us this gives them the very best start. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. Our healing video will be coming very soon.